Another Crab's Treasure has a very unique art style that kind of gives you the vibe like a game from the 2000s, like if you would ever to play Spiral the Dragon or Super Mario 64. It's an RPG game that has uh, platforming elements, but there's also a very important twist to the game that is that it is also a Souls game. Now, Souls games are my favorite kinds of games, so I'm very eager to try this game out. Now, I do apologize, my voice is going to be kind of weird because I am sick at the moment, but you know, you got to keep on that grind. So first, let's get it over. Uh, since day one, they have custom mapping for your control or your keyboard and mouse, which is always a beautiful addition to these kinds of games because sometimes, you know, the default button layout is kind of weird. This is the new one. They have assist settings. Now, personally, I'm not going to be caught dead using these settings because this ain't no Super Weenie Hut Jr. over here, right? We strictly play on Salty Spittoon level. But if you need it, it's there to help you out, you know, just in case, you know, eh, boss is giving you a little bit of trouble, but you still want to play the game. So that's there for people who like it. Okay, another great thing is they want multiple save files. Okay, now let's see what stats we're going to be working with. We got, okay, Vitality, Resistance, Attack, and MSG, which is going to be our magic stat. That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, um, but it does give you some variety of gameplay. So hopefully it won't get too monotonous uh, throughout the gameplay. Now let's get into the character sheet. Okay, the character sheet. So right off the bat, they have a skin system. Since we don't create a character, we play as this Quirrell. Uh, now the main stick of the game is that you're a hermit crab and you go around collecting shells and you use the shells. They have different abilities uh, throughout the game. Now onto that shell, you can equip these things called stowaways. They kind of act like perks. So far, the system is set out where you have a total number of slots. Each stowaway has a value assigned to it and you just mix and match until you hit your limit. Now, this is a very good system because it allows you to have a little bit of variety in your build, right? It lets you express your play style how you would like. Now, everybody's favorite skill trees. Okay, so this game does have a skill tree. Now, it's split up into three different paths, but to be honest, some of these feel like they should have already been in the game from the beginning, not requiring you to use your skill tree points. For example, parry, you have to spend points or repost. Same thing for a lunging uh, strike, like we're used to in the Souls games. Um, they're really useful. They're, it's really cool, but um, this it, it is kind of weird that they're separated in the skill tree instead of just coming by default. Um, now it does look like you're going to be able to get all the skills. So it really probably doesn't matter in the long run. This is only a couple hours in and I already unlocked most of them. Okay. So now let's get into the meat and potatoes, the gameplay. Okay. So this is a souls like game. So, you know, all the standard stuff apply, you beat up enemies, you get souls, you die. You can possibly lose your souls or drop them on the spot. You got to make it back to pick them up. They act as your currency to level up, you know, all the normal soul stuff. Okay. And we have boss fights. Now, gameplay wise, this game um, does need a little bit of more polish. Uh, for context, I am playing on the PC version, but I'm playing through Xbox Game Pass because it is free on Xbox Game Pass. Now, this may be that the Xbox version of this is a little bit um, undercooked, but there is um, quite a bit of issues with uh, frame rates dropping, with the game freezing, uh, crashing, getting stuck on the environment, um, enemies phasing through the map. And there was one instance where one of the boss fights bugged out because he threw me out of the map and then that caused the boss to die somehow. So it definitely does need a little bit more work. Now this game is made through an indie developer, Agro Crab. They are based here in the United States out of Washington. So um, give them a little bit of time. Let them, let them fix the game before you, you um, go ahead and buy it. If you know you're really into the performance and if that's gonna be a deal breaker for you, you know, give them a couple months. That way, whenever you do get the game, you'll have the best possible experience. Now, let's talk about the bosses. So far, with the bosses that I've, ex I've experienced, uh, I've seen the difficulty is a little bit lacking. Um, but then again, I have been playing Souls game for a very long time. So, you know, it's probably not made specifically for me. It's not the most cutting edge in difficulty. But for the average Joe, I'm pretty sure uh, this game is going to be challenging for them for sure. But where the challenge does come from is from the platforming from the levels themselves. 
it almost, it almost gives me like the vibes from Lords of the Fallen where the main difficulty of that game was how the level was designed and set up and the density of enemies and how they would always just ambush you and stuff like that. So that's kind of how the vibe is going right now for another crab's treasure. That's where I'm finding uh, the difficult to be set in. But you know, I'm always more than happy to eat my words. Or in the future, they could add the opposite of that accessibility setting and make uh, like a fuck you setting where they can make the game exponentially harder just for people in my kind of situation. At the end of the day, all I gotta say is that this game is great despite its shortcomings, even though it's not, you know, the most difficult Souls game there is. This game has, I don't know, this essence to it that it just brings me back to whenever I was playing games as a kid just for fun, just for the hell of it. Um, but, you know, with a modern twist on that Souls difficulty that um, I come to love nowadays. And, you know, it, it, it's a very humorous game. It doesn't take itself too seriously. You know, it's kind of ridiculous at some points. But, you know, but that's what that's what gives it its charm. It's not this edgy, broody, end-of-the-world uh, game like I'm used to with all the Souls-likes. This one's more, um, more silly, more ridiculous. And that's, at times, you know, it even makes fun of itself. But that's what gives it its charm. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and smash the subscribe button. We are almost at our goal to reach 1,000 subscribers. I couldn't do it without you guys. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.